<laughs> yeah, I know. So am I, clearly. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Well, I don't really have many announcements because the week after Christmas, it uh, seems like, you know, we rush around and we get a lot done and then Christmas and New Year's comes and we finally take a breath. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what announcements do you need to make? Oh, on the, yes. <laughs> yes. So next Sunday, a meatloaf dinner. Yes. Thank you. And that actually reminds me that, that we do want to remind you that because we shifted the time for worship, we're doing the fellowship ahead of worship. So around 1130. Um, each Sunday, if you want to come in and fellowship and have your, your cookies and your goodies and what else. And I know that they need people to, who are comfortable providing uh, goodies for that to sign up for it. So, yes. And if there are no other announcements, let us go to our call to worship. Oh God, searcher of all our hearts. You have formed us as a people and claimed us for your own. As we come to acknowledge your sovereignty and grace and to enter anew into covenant with you, reveal any reluctance or falsehood within us. Let your spirit impress your truth on our inmost being and receive us in mercy for the sake of our mediator, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> now am I on? Yay! Okay. <laughs> the joy may be we're getting water for you farmers out there, and that's good. Uh, concern, of course, is the ice and being careful with that and all of the fast drivers around. But any other joys and concerns we have? I know it's a joy to have Mari still with us from school and everybody else, all of you being here today, it's a joy to, that you came. I know it's scary sometimes to be out there, so... Cindy's got an announcement. No, it's just a joy. It was a joy Sunday night that we got back from Hamilton and we made it as far as Kimberly. And then it was a joy that we had Dave's vehicle because it has church keys. And it's a joy that there are padded pews in the church because we slept here Sunday night. Oh my God. And um, it took us an hour and a half to get home Monday, to go the last eight miles home on Monday. And we only made it because we were behind a payloader who was pulling out stuck milk trucks and plowing a path for us. And so um, we're really grateful. Hamilton was great. Yeah. We're grateful for padded um, pews. That was wonderful. <laughs> and um, be careful if you're driving out there. Oh, amen to that. Oh, wow. <laughs> yep. Just maybe prayers for Clarence to, to feel better. Yes. It's two weeks now that we've missed him, so I think he needs our prayers. He does. Yeah, we miss him a lot. And Linda, thank you. It's a joy that you've been helping us out, too. Because if you had me back there, you'd be in trouble. <laughs> and Randy has a joy... is uh, <laughs> getting around, kind of. Aisha's doing a lot better and getting around, and I'm sure she's really excited to get to school on Monday. <laughs> but yeah, she's got a load to bear with that leg. Hopefully, everything will go well for her, but slickness, I always worried, but when she was maneuvering in here Christmas Eve, I thought, wow, she can do well with those. I'd be on my face, but she can go fast, but with this snow, she'll have to be extra careful. So, any others? 
I, th I think we also need to remember all the uh, the fire victims and et cetera in Colorado that uh, wiped out a lot, completely wiped out many, many homes, like uh, almost a thousand homes. And now they got snow and single digit temperature on top of that. So um, that's, uh, yeah, they're in a tough situation. Amen to that. And they still had a few missing they weren't sure of. Oh, I know, if it's not fire, it's tornadoes and makes us be grateful we know the Lord, though he's with us. So, all right, seeing no more, let's pray. Oh, gracious Father, we know that you're our sovereign Lord, and we've just celebrated Christmas. You came to earth to be with us through Jesus, and you give us that hope and that knowledge that you are sovereign. And in this world, Lord, there's so much going on right now, but we know that you're with us in everything we do. I lift up all of those victims, not only in Colorado, but in Kentucky, and all the other places that around the world that need you. I lift up Clarence, and I ask that you just keep him in your healing arms, let him get well soon, we truly miss him, and he's, he's a blessing for us in our church. We ask that you be with all those that perhaps are on our hearts today that have lost so many in the last several months to different things. And we just pray that this new year, this 2022, will be a blessing for all of us here as well as in the world, that we can renew our faith in you and we can move forward knowing that we need to just reach out to others and let them know about our joy that is you, Jesus. We thank you for the new year. We thank you for this time together today and for re this renewal that we'll be going through today. We just praise you and thank you for actually our founder, John Wesley, and for the things he stood for. I praise you, Lord, that Bev's back today, and I pray that you'll continue to help Linda at the board back there, and thank you for Jesse. Thank you for all those that work behind the scenes, those that have scraped sidewalks and cleaned our parkway, our parking lot, and all of those things. Continue to keep us safe, Lord. Continue to protect us and guide us with your wisdom. I ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I always forget. Sorry, Lord. Okay. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm glad God's a forgiving Father.
Whoa. No scripture back there to read. I guess I'll read it from this way. It's not on the screen. I don't have it memorized. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jess. Woo! Oh, I'm glad we have assistance here. It scared me for a minute. All right. This is from John, and it's 15, 1 through 8. <laughs> I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit, by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and in, I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers, such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. May God bless the reading of his word. All right, so this week uh, we are doing something a little bit different, um, a little history about this. John Wesley understood that, you know, 
God is perfect. What the promises that God makes to us when we give our hearts and souls over to him, the promise he makes to us when we're baptized, when we take communion, all of those wonderful things, God is always faithful to. Unfortunately, we're not always faithful to our end of the agreement. And so John Wesley was aware of that, that human, you know, our, our human faults often lead us to sinfulness and often lead us to distance ourselves from God. And sometimes we need to uh, just refresh our memories of what those promises we made to God were and to come back and to, to walk um, more strongly in God's footsteps. So every year, John Wesley, sometime near the beginning of the year, would, with, his, uh, with the people that he had gathered together, those early Methodists, would do this covenant renewal service. And I've liked, I've, it, ever since I became a minister, I've always enjoyed using this on the first Sunday of the year because I think it's a wonderful opportunity as we're making our New Year's resolutions and thinking about you know, normally we're thinking about things like, oh, I'm going to go to the gym at least three times a week, you know, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to eat healthy. We're thinking usually about our physical bodies, you know. It's good to take time to think a little bit about our spiritual selves as well. So this is, it's a little updated because, you know, John Wesley spoke in that old English style, which can be a little hard to understand at times. So it's, it's been updated to be in more modern English, but it still follows the heart of the service that John Wesley wrote, um, you know, back in the 1700s. So we will be joining together in this. But also he encouraged his people to understand that a covenant is a binding agreement with God. And so he encouraged them to think of it in terms of, you know, you're making a, a legal contract with God when you take your baptismal vows, when you renew this covenant. And so he encouraged his people to sign the agreement, to sign the covenant, and to keep it with them throughout the year, to be willing to read it, to, to revisit it, to remember what it is that they are covenanting with God in. So... We're going to go through this service, but I encourage you to take the words to heart and to think about it this week. And if you feel that you are ready to make this covenant a binding agreement with God, I encourage you to sign uh, the, the programs that Janet made available to all of you. And, you know, sign it, keep it with you, keep it with your devotional uh, material so that you see it throughout the year and you'll come back to it over and over again and remind yourself of how perfect our God is and how forgiving our God is that even when we wander, God is always calling us back. So brothers and sisters in Christ, the Christian life is redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. Through baptism, we have, entered, we have entered this life and have been admitted into the new covenant of which Jesus Christ is the mediator. He sealed it with his own blood that it might last forever. On the one side, God promises to give us new life in Christ, the source and perfecter of our faith. On the other side, we are pledged to live no more for ourselves, but only for Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. From time to time, we renew our covenant with God, especially when we reaffirm the baptismal covenant and gather at the Lord's table. Today, however, we meet as the generations before us have met to renew the covenant that binds us to God. Let us make this covenant of God our own. So commit yourselves to Christ as his servants. Give yourselves to him that you may belong to him. Christ has many services to be done. Some are more easy and honorable. Others are more difficult and disgraceful. Some are suitable to our inclinations and interests. Others are contrary to both. In some, we may please Christ and please ourselves. But then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. It is necessary, therefore that we consider what it means to be a servant of Christ. Let us therefore go to Christ and pray. Let me be your servant under your command. I will no longer be my own. I will give up myself to your will in all things. 
Be satisfied that Christ shall give you your place and work. Lord, make me what you will. I put myself fully into your hands. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and with a willing heart give it all to your pleasure and disposal. Christ will be the savior of none but his servants. He is the source of all salvation to those who obey. Christ will have no servants except by consent. Christ will not accept anything except full consent to all that he requires. Christ will be all in all or he will be nothing. So confirm this by a holy covenant. To make this covenant a reality in your life, listen to these admonitions. <clears throat> First, set apart some time more than once to be spent alone before the Lord in seeking earnestly God's special assistance and gracious acceptance of you, in carefully thinking through all the conditions of the covenant and searching your hearts whether you have already freely given your life to Christ, and consider what your sins are. Consider the laws of Christ, how holy, strict, and spiritual they are, and whether you, after having carefully considered them, are willing to choose them all. Be sure you are clear in these matters. See that you do not lie to God. Second, be serious and in a spirit of holy awe and reverence. Third, claim God's covenant. Rely upon God's promise of giving grace and strength so you can keep your promise. Trust not your own strength and power. Fourth, resolve to be faithful. You have given to the Lord your hearts. You have opened your mouths to the Lord, and you have dedicated yourself to God. With God's power, never go back. And last, be prepared to renew your covenant with the Lord. Fall down on your knees, lift your hands toward heaven, open your hearts to the Lord as we pray. O righteous God, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, See me as I fall down before you. Forgive my unfaithfulness in not having done your will, for you have promised mercy to me if I turn to you with my whole heart. God requires that you shall put away all your idols. I hear from the bottom of my heart, renounce them all covenanting with you that no known sin shall be allowed in my life. Against your will, I have turned my love toward the world. In your power, I will watch all temptations that will lead me away from you. For my own righteousness is riddled with sin, unable to stand before you. Through Christ, God has offered to be your God again, if you would let him. Before all heaven and earth, I here acknowledge you as my Lord and God. I take you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for my portion, and vow to give up myself, body and soul, as your servant, to serve you in holiness and righteousness, all the days of my life. God has given the Lord Jesus Christ as the only way and means of coming to God. Jesus, I do here on bended knees accept Christ as the only new and living way and sincerely join myself in a covenant with him. O oh, blessed Jesus, I come to you hungry, sinful, miserable, blind, and naked, unworthy even to wash the feet of your servants. I do here with all my power accept you as my Lord and head. I renounce my own worthiness and vow that you are the Lord my righteousness. I renounce my own wisdom and take you for my only guide. 
I renounce my own will and take your will as my law. Christ has told you that you must suffer with him. I do here covenant with you, O Christ, to take my lot with you as it may fall. Through your grace, I promise that neither life nor death shall part me from you. God has given holy laws as the rule of your life. I do here willingly put my neck under your yoke to carry your burden. All your laws are holy, just, and good. I therefore take them as the rule for my words, thoughts, and actions, promising that I will strive to order my whole life according to your direction and not allow myself to neglect anything I know to be my duty. The Almighty God searches and knows your heart. O oh God, you know that I make this covenant with you today without guile or reservation. If any falsehood should be in it, guide me and help me to set it straight. And now, glory be to you, O God the Father. As my God and Father, glory be to you, O God the Son, who have loved me and washed me from my sins in your own blood, and now is my Savior and Redeemer. Glory be to you, O God the Holy Spirit, who by your almighty power have turned my heart from sin to God. Almighty God, the Lord Omnipotent, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have now become my covenant friend, and I, through your infinite grace, have become your covenant servant. So be it. And let the covenant I have made on earth be ratified in heaven. Amen. As I said before, you are advised to make this covenant not only in your heart, but in word, not only in word, but in writing. Therefore, with all reverence, lay the service before the Lord as your act and deed, and when you have done this, sign it. Then keep it as a reminder of the holy agreement between God and you, that you may remember it during doubts and temptations. Let us join together in our hymn, which is number 117, O God, our help in ages past. And now is a time where we uh, 
celebrate the good things that God has given us through an opportunity to give some back through our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. So I just want to remind you that our treasure box is in the back. Um, so if you have brought a, a gift for God and would like to leave it there, please do so on, on your way out. Let us go to our Lord in prayer. Almighty God, you have bestowed so very many blessings upon us as we've come through this season of Christmas and enter into a new year. We are reminded as, as the spirit of Christmas still lives within us that you gave everything for us. Lord, we ask that you receive the gifts that we offer back in return. Use them so that your will will be carried out in this world, so that your justice will be lived here on earth, and so that all of those that we encounter near and far may come to know your saving power. All of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Before we move into communion, I just have to say in the spirit of giving thanks, um, I, there's too many people to, to name everyone who makes sure that everything goes off without a hitch, you know, from the worship design committee to our musicians to everyone. But this week I have to acknowledge two very special people who have stepped up to make sure things happen because I gave Clarence a lot of material to put in the slides. I mean, a lot. <laughs> and so even while he was sick, he took the time to work on those and to make sure those were ready for us so that we could have that. And Janet stepped up and when, she was when we were concerned that Clarence wasn't gonna be able to make it and that we might not be able to get the slides downloaded in time, then she jumped in very quickly and made sure that you guys would all have <laughs> the written materials so that everyone would be prepared. So I just wanted to give a big thanks to Clarence and Janet for making sure things went off without a hitch today. So let's give them a round. <laughs> And now let us move into our, our uh, service of communion. Let us give thanks for all of God's mercies. O oh God, our covenant friend, you have been gracious to us through all the years of our lives. We thank you for your loving care, which has filled our days and brought us to this time and place. You have given us life and reason and set us in a world filled with your glory. You have comforted us with family and friends and ministered to us through the hands of our sisters and brothers. You have filled our hearts with hunger after you and have given us your peace. You have redeemed us and called us to a high calling in Christ Jesus. You have given us a place in the fellowship of your spirit and the witness of your church. You have been our light in darkness and a rock of strength in adversity and temptation. You have been the very spirit of joy in our joys and the all-sufficient reward in all our labors. You remembered us when we forgot you. You followed us even when we tried to flee from you. You met us with forgiveness when we returned to you for all your patience and overflowing grace. O 
On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And so, somewhere I have mine. <laughs> <laughs> the elements were uh, are back at the entryway. If you didn't pick one up on your way in, feel free to, to grab one. But you have, that's an empty one that I have. I know I brought one up here with me. I have no clue where I put it. <laughs> oh, I found it. <laughs> it rolled underneath there. <laughs> so... <laughs> Sometimes it might be a little hard to find, but Jesus always provides. <laughs> so you have the bread, which is the body of Christ given for you. Take, eat in remembrance of Jesus. <laughs> and the cup of salvation, which is the blood of our Lord, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take, drink. Let us all join together in our prayer after communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our closing hymn today is Trees of the Field.
Amen. I love that song, but I have been banned from past churches from ever clapping to it because I am I'm your stereotypical white person that's always off beat. So, <laughs> so I appreciate those of you who can clap in the right places. Thank you. <laughs> But go into the world this week as a people whose covenant with Christ has been renewed. Know that Christ has forgiven you for whatever shortcomings might have, might have followed you throughout this past year. But now we have a new opportunity to step out in faith and to, to spread the light of God's gospel everywhere that we go. So receive this blessing. Go forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.